We haven't done much by way of trials yet, being fairly um, new as a program. But what one thing that we have achieved in this space um, is the formation of a working group. So I wanted to talk about that in the first instance. Um, Dean touched on um, the collaborative nature of IWN. And I think a really important aspect of these programs is that the program leads are not the experts, they're not there to actually do the doing. We're really facilitating what is a passion and a drive across our industry and pulling those points together and connecting people so that we actually get real deliverables out of the program. Um, so I'm not a drone expert, I'm not a, you know, an operator, I'm not even from the water industry, so I really know very little about what I'm talking about. Um, but what I am good at is connecting people and getting the most out of people. So as a working group leader, what I've been able to do, we've gone from two working group members in uh, six months ago to about nine. We have a large contingent from North East Water. I think they're mainly from John's team. Um, so That's thanks, John. <laughs> there's another name that I, there's another name on there. I've not quite. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, there is one more from your team that's volunteered herself as well, so <laughs> the more the merrier. Um, but what it shows is in the, using the champ we use the champions to go out and find these working group members for the Remote Technologies Programme. Um, so thank you for doing that, because these people are really passionate about remote technologies. They're really passionate about getting involved in the programme. And I, what I'm using these people for is that they're bringing the insights into this group. They're doing that environmental scanning around their own organisations. Um, they're doing environmental scanning around things that they've seen um, across other industries and also, you know, Google is their friend as well. And they're bringing those feeders in inputs into this programme and from them we're able to sort of disseminate some of that information back out and say, oh, is this the sort of thing that we really want to be doing in this program? Um, so I thank those guys because they've been giving up their time over the past eight months to help me come up with a list of potential trials in this, in this field. I couldn't do it without them. So we um, worked on shortlisting those ideas into um, a list of possible trials for the first year of this program. And what we came back with, we put this also out as a survey to the water corporations and people came back and voted on what they thought they would be interested in. And these were the top ones that came back. So algal bloom monitoring, which I'll talk about in a minute. Water collection drones. Um, using virtual reality footage for asset inspections. Satellites for leak detection. And I know I've noted that we've done previous trials, as Dean said, two previous trials, not with great... Um, results, but there may be something with the NDVI that we might be able to bring into that mix that might give different results, um, and weed spraying trials. And after taking a vote across the water corporations, we got this into the top three trials, and they were the multispectral camera for algal bloom detection, virtual reality, and also water sampling vehicles. Um, we completed strategic assessment forms on all of these and circulated them back out through the champions and the working group and the alumni that we have in IWN already um, to say, what do you think? Can you let us know if any of these things are already in your in progress in your water corporation? Um, and or is it something that you'd be interested in? And that's another critical part of this whole program. And I think Dean or John spoke about it. Oh no, it was actually it was you actually, Brett, where you sort of said, sometimes it's about knowing what not to do, not just what you want to do. Um, and so it's really critical to go, to go back out and sense check your list of trials rather than hurrying along and saying, I want to do this trial, I want to check this technology. Find out if somebody else is already investing in it. And you'll find that in the next slide that, you know, we have found that most of these things are already being invested in. So if there's anything I've learned, it's that there's somebody out there doing some of this stuff already. So the multi-spectral camera for algal bloom was probably the, the one that most people put their hand up for. I don't know if there was one water corporation that didn't express an interest in either learning about it, being, providing a site for it, um, giving us their drone operators for it, um, or, or just really getting to know it. So this is a really popular trial. So there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that we'll be doing a business case for the executive group to consider for, for actually funding this trial. Uh, we've still got a bit of time up our sleeve because, of course, our gold bloom growth is not in its um, ascendance right now, being in winter. Um, so what this multispectral camera does, and you'll see that NDVI 
um, reference there as an indices that Dean also mentioned, is that um, it measures the chlorophyll levels in plants. So it's extensively used now, starting to be used extensively, sorry, in farming practices, so large crop areas. Farming, farmers are using it to say, what is the health of the crops that I've got out there? Because it covers a, you can cover a wide area um, with a remote vehicle. Um, and of course, green means it's healthy, brown comes back, it's not so healthy. So it helps them to sort of be able to say, um, where are my crops failing or where are they actually flourishing? Um, what we want to do is take that indices and try it on water to see if we can predict via the level of chlorophyll in the water whether we're gonna, there's going to be an algal bloom occurrence in a waterway. So we'll find sites where there is obviously history of prevalent growth um, and blooms uh, and start to and use this. And it's really about getting a pixel um, reflectance off the water. So it's really critical of you know, your cloud cover, the direction that your drone goes in using this camera, the height that it goes at because the sun reflection, you know, where the sun is when you do it. Um, and there'll be lots of data collection across a body of water. But we're hoping to use the NDVI or a similar indices um, with this multispectral camera to say, well, does it actually pick up the levels of chlorophyll in the water and what does that tell us? And we'll also do some baseline measuring in other bodies of water um, where we can sort of get some baseline measurements to say what does it look like when it's in bloom, but also what does it look like when it's not in bloom? And so we can use those to actually benchmark against as well. Um, and I guess really the benefit of looking at something like this technology is that um, water sampling at this point in time is manual. You know, it's heavily reliant on people getting out on a vehicle, going into the water um, and, and checking. Uh, but also for when we talk about algae detection, it's really a reactive mode that we all go into when algal blooms occur. We know when it's going to happen, the time of year and the conditions that are going to um, uh, lead up to it. Um, but collecting imagery over a period of time, we're hoping will help us see where there's some seeding or some hot spots. So you can actually predict where it's going to bloom and take some preventative measures, even if that is only in the communications that go out rather than the treatment. So that's what we're hoping to do, which would save some time and efficiency. The second most popular trial was to look at virtual reality. Um, but as we found out that this is already being done at Melbourne Water and quite successfully, I believe they won an award for a VR module that they built, uh, created for um, asset inspections or for training, safety training. And Melbourne Water immediately came back to me when I put out the, the reports and said, Oh, hey, look, don't, you know, don't put any more money into that because we've actually got a fairly credible program and we were really, we're willing to put that data into the RWN program and share it with everybody. So no, you don't have to go through that, you know. And we'll be looking for people to sort of work with as well in further trials because they're also developing that program to look at remote um, VR training where they can put two people in the same space from completely different locations. Um, so that was great. So it means it is being done in the industry. It's not being funded by RWN, so we save a bit of money there in that sense, money to do something else. But they are more than willing to bring that learning in. So we'll bring that data into the program and share it through uh, with everyone. Um, when we looked at the water sampling vehicle, again, Mobile <laughs> Water came back with us. They're, you know, they're always on the front foot. Um, and they said they had two trials that they were already scoping. One was a surface sampling using a drone and the other one was the development of a water quality monitoring surface vessel. Um, they are currently working with a university on the development of that surface vessel. Um, but what they would hope to do is take that into large bodies of water, do some deep column sampling. Um, they, they'll have a payload of around two, two litres per sample. So it's going to be a fairly big craft. Um, an unmanned craft at that. Um, but again, they said that once they've done the prototyping, they'll be looking for trial sites, not just their own trial sites. So it's another instance where we don't, you know, we can use what's already out there and get those learnings back into the organisation, into the industry at large. So what I'll do is uh, be putting expressions of interest out to people for trial sites if they want to get involved in those trials that Melbourne Water are running. And they said they will share that data with the IWN program. Um, so then what does it leave us with? You know, we sort of found that these trials are, uh, some of them are already out there. So satellites for leak detection, Dean did say that it's perhaps not a goer at this point in time, but with 
um, the NDVI indices, it might bring a different element to it. At Goulburn Murray Water, we have just worked with Veolia to actually do some satellite pre-feasibility. Um, our issues m are quite different in our leak detection. We're looking at things very much on the surface. Um, our channels networks get, um, you know, clogged up with silt and weed buildup. Um, but what, an interesting um, application that we've found that it's been really useful for in that pre-feasibility is um, compliance or really sort of illegal take and use. And that might be an angle that we can look at the satellite monitoring for. We do, our compliance team have drones and they do go out and collect evidentiary information for the legal team on particular take and use um, uh, customers. But with a satellite, it could be that constant monitoring, that much wider berth monitoring. So you can see where dams are filling up when they shouldn't really be filling up because we're in off season or there's been no rainfall um, and, and then be able to use that over a period of time. So I think there might be an application there in, in the satellite space. Um, the weed spraying trial. So this is really interesting. At the moment, there's only one drone that is um, supported as a protocol by Agvic and CASA and that is called the Yamaha RM Max um, and that is not a great, it's a very manual heavy uh, drone to use and it's not great for applications such as difficult to access areas which a lot of the water corps have said is the really the angle they want to look at for a weed spraying drone where people can't get you know on very you know cliffside areas or on, on embankments um, and so I think the RWN has got some merit to work collaboratively to go and actually lobby the um, AGVIC and CASA. They said they're open to looking at other protocols, but nobody's approached them with a protocol that they would also adopt alongside the Yamaha. So I think that what we would do in the first instance for that trial is put some ca business case together as an industry to say, can you look at, can we actually use another protocol which we could then trial and show you the results of that trial and then get AGVIC and CASA on board with that.